In chapter one, we looked at equations that had no solution or equations that had an, an infinite number of solutions. What I want to do is expand that into graphing and show you what uh, what linear equations look like when they're graphed and they have no solution or one solution or infinite number of solutions. So um, let's graph these just like we would be graphing any other equation. So we need to know the slope and the intercept. I'll do this one in pink. The slope is 3, the intercept is at 0, 1, and for this one, the slope is 3, and the intercept is at 0, negative 5. So let's graph them. So 0, 1, slope is up 3 right one. I can also go down three, left one. And I have to label. Since we're going to have more than one equation on the graph, it's very important that you label your lines. Now I'll go to the second one. Zero, negative five, up three, right one, up three, right one, up three, write one and connect. In chapter two we talked about parallel and perpendicular lines and one of the things that we said it was true for parallel lines is that they have the same slope. So you notice in the graph they're parallel so they have no solution And the reason mathematically that they have no solution is because their slopes are the same. So we could have recognized that in the beginning and written it anyway. We can also solve it by substitution. So here's what it looks like when you solve it by substitution and there's no solution. Remember, substitution says that you cross out the y equals part and you just take the two equations and set them equal to each other. So I'll bring variables to the left, minus 3x, and you see how this is an, a false statement. When it's false, then that's when um, you get no solution. So you can also recognize it in substitution when you get that false statement. Example two, the perimeter of the rectangle is 36, the perimeter of the triangle is 108. Write and solve a system of linear equations. So the perimeter is when you add up all the sides. So I'll do all my work down here. 4y plus 4y plus 2x plus 2x equals 36. So that gives me 8y plus 4x equals 36. And when an equation is written like this in standard form, which we talked about in chapter 2, it's best if you want to graph it by finding the intercepts. You could manipulate it and move the 4x over to the right and then divide everything by 8 um, and get it in slope intercept form. But I want to practice again with that technique of finding intercepts. Can you please pause the video now and find me the intercepts, x and y axes intercepts for this equation and then when you have those intercepts, play. Hopefully those are the two intercepts that you got, 0, 4 and a half, and 9, 0. If you didn't, and you don't know how we got those, then you need to come see me for help. So let's go to graph, and since we're talking about units and perimeter, it doesn't make sense for us to be in any quadrant other than quadrant 1. You could be slightly negative um, in theory when you get more complicated. For example, if this had said, 6x plus 12 as a term, then you could have a negative x value while still having a positive side length. But our expressions are 
pretty standard enough that we won't be in the negative quadrants. So let's grab 0, 4.5. And, and I typically tell you that you're not really supposed to be graphing decimals, and that is true. But in this case, this is how we're doing it, and we're graphing. Grab a straight edge. And then the last thing that we have to do is write the equation. Um, in this case, it's a segment because we're not extending it. 8y plus 4x equals 36. Let's go to the triangle, do the same thing for the triangle. I'm going to combine it in my head and say 12x plus 24y equals 108. I want you to do the same technique, pause the video, and find me the intercepts. Now what you hopefully notice right away is that these are the same intercepts. Now if they have the same intercepts, then that means it's the same line. So really, there's no need to graph it again because as you see, it's the exact same line. So it's already graphed and it's already labeled, so you don't really have to do anything. And when they are the same line, or in this case a segment, if they're the same, representing the same values, then any value of x is going to make the um, system true. So our solution to this system is to say that there's an infinite number of solutions. Don't say infinite like you're trying to be cool and abbreviate because infinite means that like the number is infinite, like infinity in a sense. So you have to say that the solutions, the number of solutions is infinite. The numbers that you could plug in is not infinity, but there's an infinite amount of them. I want to last thing before we wrap this up is show you how we could have done that by using um, elimination, the elimination technique that we learned recently. So I'll take this first equation, 8y plus 4x equals 36, and I'm going to line it up with the other one, um, but be careful, the y is in the other spot, so I have to rewrite it. And if I want to use the elimination technique, I need to make one of the coefficients either the same or opposite. So I will choose to make the, I don't know, who cares? I'll make the 4 match up with the 12. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 3. So I would get 24y plus 12x equals, that's 108, and then line it up with the other one, which is 24y plus 12x equals 108. And then if you go to then subtract them, this cancels, this cancels, and this cancels, and you have 0 equals 0. Remember, in Chapter 1, when we talked about um, true statements, this is a true statement, and true statements mean infinite number of solutions. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.